Good evening and welcome to a very special edition of the Magpie Circle show tonight and certainly one in which the content we'll be discussing uh, very different to the show that we had been planning. Um, we're joined tonight by Lee Curtis from the Nottingham Post and excuse me, uh, Beth Curzon, formerly of Notts County Ladies and currently in between international female clubs. Um, to the both of you, a very warm welcome. Thank you. Good evening. Thank you. And we're hoping to have Les Brad, the club's record scorer, very shortly. We, we have been having one or two gremlins, so apologies for starting late. Um, what I'd like to do is just read you out the statement and then let's get the thoughts of Lee and Beth. Uh, House rules tonight, we want this to be a constructive, positive debate. No personal abuse, having a pop, all the rest of it. Um, we've already got record numbers of people online, huge numbers of questions. We'll be endeavouring to get through all of those. Um, so let's just listen to this statement that came from Alexander and Christoph Reitz earlier today. We wish to place on record the huge respect we have for Neil, both as a manager and a man. He stuck by this club through some of its darkest hours and has played a leading role in stabilising us following a devastating relegation, helping to maintain a close connection between the players, staff and supporters in the most trying of circumstances. We will never forget the job he did in guiding us to last season's playoff final at Wembley and some of the excellent performances he has extracted from the team during our time at the helm. It has also been pleasing to see an upturn in recent results, including another spirited fight back last night. And we understand, therefore, that this announcement may come as a surprise to our supporters, who we know share our view that Neil is an excellent ambassador for the club. We do not, however, apply short term thinking to decisions of this magnitude. We consider many factors which far outweigh our results in the last few matches. And these deliberations have ultimately led us to conclude that we can be better and that a change is needed to take us to the next level. Neil has always said that when the time comes for him to depart Meadow Lane, he will leave having helped to create a far better footballing environment than he inherited. He has undoubtedly achieved that and we will forever be grateful to him for his efforts in rebuilding a platform for the club to go on and achieve success. We'd also like to express our gratitude to Greg, that's Greg Abbott, who has been a terrific support to Neil and a valuable member of our backroom team since his arrival last year. He and Neil depart with our very best wishes. OK, that's the statement. Lee, what are your thoughts? Um, overwhelming sadness, really. I'd, uh... Before we came on air, I don't think I've ever felt as deflated about a manager leaving Notts as I have since Kevin Nolan left. Um, Neil was a, is a proud, humble guy. He's an absolute gentleman. He was brilliant with the media team. Um, he did wonders last season in getting the club to the playoffs when I think before a ball had even been kicked, I think a lot of Notts fans were were thinking, listen, it, let's just get to mid-table. But given, given everything that had happened in that summer when the takeover takeover was completed late and I think Notts had about seven or eight players in the squad before a ball was kicked and the squad wasn't even in place was it when they took to the field against Eastleigh um, but he did wonders last season and I've got to say I'm extremely shocked I didn't see it coming I've, I've spoken to people various people today and I'm told the players and the staff are as equally as shocked by by the news Um Obviously, Christopher and Alexander have, have got their reasons for doing it. Um, it will be interesting to see when we actually get to ask them the questions, what now is the long-term aim for the football club this year? Is it to still try and get promotion? Because the new man, whoever it comes in, has got to hit the ground running. I think the fans are absolutely desperate to get out of the league this year. Um, so, uh, you know, it, it on the surface, it, it looks a gamble. But until we understand the reasons as to why the change was made um it's very hard to comment and whether it is the right decision whether to to depart with neil only in the fullness in time will we get to know that on this show we like to give a full broad spectrum of all knox fans you know clearly i and les and i'm not sure whether les can hear us at the minute that's some of the gremlins we're having uh we're from the jurassic era you're kind of like the mid era lee 
Uh, mm. And Beth, you're kind of from the younger generation. Um, you're an avid follower of Knots. Um, what what's your take? Do you think and kind of the younger generation of Knots fans? Um, my take is to be honest, similar to Lee's. I'm really disappointed, quite shocked. Um, I think from my point of view, it would have been nice to have given the opportunity to at least the end of the season. Um, again, like you mentioned before, um, he never shied away from the cameras, never threw players under the bus, would always come out and be honest. Um, he'd kind of speak about problems that I was thinking myself. So I think that was quite um, kind of resonated with, with lots of fans. Um, but the honesty, and it's hard to find in, in lots of, you know, figures of power in general, but especially in football. Um, but I think online, um, it's a bit of a mixed bag with people my age. There's a few people that were very much like, um, you know, RDL, let's let's go to the next one. We're not playing as well as we can, which in a sense is, is understandable. I can see sort of both sides. Um, but I veer towards the more positive. I I... It's with sadness that he's, that he's left today for me. But it's a bit of a mixed bag that I've found um, for my age online, yeah. OK. Um, I think, as Leah said, it's come as a shock to everyone. I think I don't think anyone particularly saw this saw, saw this coming. Um, and we, we've had a poll today, uh, and we should be announcing those results pretty shortly on that poll, uh, although I'm led to believe it's round about the 50-50 mark. Uh, in terms of supporters' views. Um, in fact, yeah, we can do it right now. So 39% uh, say it was the right decision to get rid of Neil. 61% uh, say no. And that's best part of 400 votes. So it's a reasonable cross sample. So errs towards people being... Uh, against the decision i think whichever way you look at it it's a brave decision it's a brave decision it's a it's a sign of intent i guess of the owners that they want to get promotion this season and they don't want to mess around i guess the decision making process or the thought making process lee is are they going to have a better chance with a new manager for the last two and a half months of the season than they are or were with Neil Ardley. Yeah, yeah, well, we don't know that. I mean, this is what happens when you sack a manager and then you... I mean, I've got to say, I've got to be honest, I, I, I'm not sure whether it's the right decision. I mean, I, I think in the fullness of time, we'll find out whether it was, but I think being sixth in the table, uh, one win away from a, a day out at Wembley in the FA Trophy, on the surface, yeah, I can understand that the performances were, were perhaps not as free-flown as last season, but they've been mitigating circumstances for that. They've lost Callum Roberts throughout the most part of the season. They've never really replaced Christian Dennis or Wes Thomas. I don't think the squad's as good enough uh, in the final third this year as it was last year. Um, those players who have come in haven't been able to replace the goals that, that, that Wes and, and Christian obviously contributed last season. So... Um, the biggest question for me is, is the new man, whoever it is, do they feel that the new man is going to get a better tune out of those players, even though we've had 25 games of the season or whatever it is? Are they going to be able to turn Elijah Sam into a 10 to 15 goal forward? Are they going to be able to turn Jimmy Knowles into a 10 to 15 goal forward? You know, that that's ultimately the, the face of it. Yeah, we can all talk about and say, well, Knott's played fantastic football, but it's a results it's a results based industry. I get that. But not formed since January. Is it two defeats in sixteen games, or whatever it was? If they'd, I think, if they'd won on Tuesday, they would have taken eleven points out of fifteen. So I, I, I am a little bit shocked by. It. I'm, I'm, I'm sad as well because um, Neil was a was a fantastic man to deal with. Um, beautiful family, um, and I'll tell you a little story about him, which sums him up as a character. When I had my heart operation last November, and I couldn't get a lift. Um, for various reasons back from Nottingham. In the end, a, a good friend of mine came out, but Neil was one of the first people to offer. He was one of the first people who said, he wished me well on my operation. He said, look, if you get any problems, get him back, give me a call and I'll take you back to Lincoln, which I think shows the true measure of the man. Um, so, yeah, I'm really sad about it. I, 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 
We'll, we'll just wait and see. I mean, it's just whoever they bring in. We we yet to know. I th- the appointments obviously going to have to be a quick one because they've got a lot of important games coming up. There's still promotion very much to play for. So um, it's just a case of whether the decision is the right one. Um, what I want to do before going uh, to you, Beth, is to just read out a cross section of these question uh, uh, observations that we've got. So if we can go to the top, Harry. And there are so many. So I want to just want to read a cross section of these out to everyone and we can pick up on various points. Um, SK, I think Michael Doyle has way too much of an influence on the selection due to the fact he plays every game. No, uh, what is 39, not 40, plays every game. Everyone can see uh, he's struggling. Ruben is a must start. Uh, PJ Defiance X24. The COVID has helped the season stop start. We never replaced Dennis properly. Wes Thomas refusing to play didn't help. Um, I think Neil was placing his hopes on Kel Roberts until injury. Um, Martin Hearson is one. I mean, I've, I, I stand to be corrected. Any news in the rumours surrounding Nicky Butt leaving Manchester United, which seems to have a considerable amount of traction on social media. Slowly but surely, 69 TV. I wonder why Nicky left. Um, um, he wouldn't leave a Premier League club for a National League one, though. Yeah, I, I, I doubt that rather as well. Um, James Spring. If you're replacing a manager in a playoff spot midway through a season, you're instantly putting the new one under ridiculous pressure from the off. First big test for the owners, promotion or bust. Neil Holmes, shocked and absolutely gutted by Neil's departure. Best manager we have had in a long time. Always honest and understood what being manager of knots meant. Treated very poorly here, in my opinion. J.G. Whittaker, players totally at fault. The experienced players need to hang their heads in shame. Hopefully the new manager will get rid of the dead wood. Um, James Spring, again, I just hope we don't experience a slump with a disillusioned squad like we did when Keith Curl got sacked. It seems clear the players loved Ardley and there was a brilliant spirit among the group. Danny Rodwell, uh, no relation. Uh, Wrong decision, I think. Hopefully it won't come back and bite us. K. Oliver Ramsden, not sure what I make of all of this, feel for Ardley, but it's about promotion and it wasn't going to happen under him. Z. Luke, FTW, I can't see them appointing Doyle as he has been part of the problem. Love Ardley, but this gives the new man chance to sign the box-to-box midfielder we really need. Uh, Let's have a look. Chloe Norman, we need someone who can get the players working again. J.G. Whittaker, waiting for Lee to do his hair. That'll be a long wait. Um, uh, <laughs> a bit of light, a bit of banter there. Uh, Chris Barker, I think the decision was already made. Last night's result was irrelevant. Drew, right decision just a little late in the day. Uh, SK, hardly knew, I think, anyway, because his interview post-match was very different, more emotion involved and kept pulling a weird face. Paul Hawksworth, I'd like to know who signed all the players. Drew, run out of ideas, as nice a bloke as he undoubtedly is. Um, Danny Rodwell, who was scouting, recruiting. Um, Nathan Chambers, Luke Garrard, anyone, doing a good job on a shoestring at Boreham Wood and strong personality for a club uh, full of pressure. Uh ah, yeah. the, the news has reached Canada. Kevin J. Eskduska Jr. Thierry Henry is looking for a job as well. <laughs> Uh, Kelds Dyke just need to find a manager now with at least a 42% win rate. I detect a certain amount of sarcasm in that one. Um, David Skinner is a stat 25th manager in 21 seasons. JG Whittaker, the owners run a root all stats business and do lots of research on bringing in the right players. Uh, Sam Locke, I'm in the camp of liking Neil and wishing him all the best, but thinking we need change going forward. He gave us continuity when we needed it, but now we need to instill a winning mentality. SK, in my opinion, he will be a biggish UK name or foreign known to the owners. Lee Brearley, shocked. I thought he was doing a good job in a really hard league. Um, Adam Wright, what do you all make of Alan Hardy's comments? Claims we should have done better last season in this league with amateur sides in it. Obviously forgetting he's the one who's put us there. Dale Pikett losing Neil Cox was a big thing. 
Um, Richard Hawksworth, I've read today that the National League player registration deadline has been extended today to April the 22nd, if that is correct. Uncanny timing, coincidence or influence the sacking of N.A. Uh, Steve Silver, very shocked by decision. Uh, sacking of Neil should have kept him till the end of the season. Um, there's a few more, but well, we'll be going on for another hour on those. Um, can we call, call in Les Brad? Les, can you hear us? I've been listening to the conversation, Paul, and hearing it very uh, bright. Can you hear me? Hey, we're delighted to hear you. Les, <laughs> um, record club goal scorer for the club. Uh, we were actually talking this morning while you were laying those bricks, weren't you, uh, in your DIY project. Um, <laughs> what do you make of today's announcement? I'm very saddened by it all. And just listening to, I didn't hear what Beth said, but um, Lee's comments, absolutely spot on. You couldn't wish to to meet a better guy than than Neil. Um, during the, last, the first lockdown, he spent... Um, a lot of time ringing up supporters, talking to them. Um, he had a smile on his face, you know, if your chin was down, he, he gave you a lift. Uh, and he came into the club um, when we were in, 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 in a lot of trouble. Um, 30 plus players on, on, on the books and, and some of those maybe not the right people that you would want um, around. And, and, he, and he tried to... Um, to sort all that whilst trying to keep us in the league. He was unable to do that. And um, the owners um, got behind him um, last season. And I felt this time last year or a couple of weeks ago that we were we were in some great form. We'd gone to Barrow and got a victory. We we, we um, filed and we beat, I can't remember, it was Eastleigh 4-0 at home. And I thought this is automatic promotion. Then bang, the lockdown came and and then just moving on from that, the number of times that the games were called off and on, off, on, off the the, the, the pandemic. And, and I felt really sorry for him. And and also there is something that, that not a lot of people think about, that players, professional players, they get paid for playing and that is in front of crowds and the, and the crowds are, are um, like an extra player that that that, um, that spur the lads on. And I love running out at Meadow Lane and, and to listen to the fans. And it gave you a lift. And that's all gone from Meadow Lane now. There are no people in the ground. So um, I'm, sh I'm sure it must be more difficult for them playing at home under those circumstances. Um, and Because I would imagine that the opposition are coming along, enjoying that, and playing on a, on a, on a nice surface as well. So... He's had a lot to put up with uh, this year, and um, it stands, although we have been getting results, we, we we haven't been putting on the performances um, that we did when we were going well last last year. And and I I agree with Lee. We, we we're missing a, a Christian Dennis or Wes Thomas up there that played with um, with with Kyle. We, we were a threat. We were getting balls out wide and coming into the box, and there was lots of chances and. We haven't been scoring many goals like that. The goals that we're scoring are the contenders for the, uh, for, for the bad goal of the season, aren't they? Every time we score a goal, it's of that nature. We don't seem to be getting around the, the back of full-backs, balls coming in the box, and attackers, uh, attacking is very difficult. But um, No, I've, I've felt really sorry, but it is interesting that the, the, in the statement today, the owners have said this isn't a knee-jerk um, reaction. It's not because of the results. So, there's a feeling maybe that you know they're looking at changing the way that we're we're playing a little maybe i don't know um it's going to be interesting to see who comes in and uh, how the results go now um as i understand this to put a bit of flesh on the bone so to speak to quote derek pavis from many moons ago as players would tell you when they went into con um, contract negotiations um uh, alexander and christoph uh came to meadow lane this morning uh, and uh, Neil and Greg were were brought into the club, uh, and one then assumes that um, the deed was done face to face. Um, we all kind of dissect these statements and look at every single nuance, but I think one thing that clearly stands out, they've said specifically they are not seeking uh, re-inviting applicants 
for the job, which the inescapable conclusion is that the new manager, head coach, call it what you will, uh, is effectively signed, sealed and delivered. Uh, and I may be wildly off beam here. Um, I would be very surprised if that new candidate is not unveiled either this evening, might even be on air. Well, I've, I've, I'm sure your letters all know, um, or tomorrow morning. Um, Beth, thoughts on that? I agree. Um, it's quite obvious that this has been in the pipeline. Um, for longer than just a day like you said it's not a knee-jerk reaction um you don't just pull a manager out of thin air it's it's been planned which suggests to me that there is you know like we, we said there's other reasons behind is it their kind of idea for a longer term plan in football um has there been something else that's gone that we don't know about you know fan side player side manager sides very different things we don't know everything that's going on has something else happened um but yeah it'll be very interesting to see who is announced and when um and obviously there's the whole the whole idea of um the amount of managers we had over the past seasons and and the whole analogy of kind of insanity is the same thing over and over again expect a different result you know is is second manager the right thing to do as soon as we hit a rough spot but like lisa we'll just have to see and wait it out um depends who's going to come in and what the initial reaction is going to be you know at, just before saturday's game as well um I think we've just got to play it out and see, but it's very interesting. Um, I'd like to put in a bit of context, um, if I may, uh, that people may not be aware of with Neil's appointment at the club two years ago uh, and some of the ensuing um, challenges, issues that he faced. Remember when um, he was to be interviewed for the role? after Notts had uh, released uh, Harry Kuehl. Um, and uh, I was, as you would know, a board member then. Uh, and the interview took place at Alan's offices, uh, as they were then, at Paragon. Uh, and so I was uh, asked if I could go down to East Midlands Parkway Station because Neil had come up on the train, meet him, take him up to, to see Alan and have a chat. So I'm on East Midlands Parkway Station. Uh, and I'm working out which end is first class and which end is standard class. So I get to the end where there's first class train pulls in and I'm looking, a handful of people came off. None of them, uh, none of them are Neil Hardley. Thought this is a good start. So I walked back down into the waiting room uh, and there was Neil. I says, oh, I didn't see you. When did you get off? And I said, oh, I was waiting at the top end. He says, oh, he says, he says I'm, I'm, I was in standard class. He says, one thing you need to know about me, he says, I'm a very humble man. And almost his first words to me, a humble man, humility. And when he met Alan, they were kind of uh, words that he used on a, on a regular basis. And I think when someone plays in the crazy game, as it then was at Wimbledon, you kind of imagine a John Fashionu, a Sanchez type of character. You know, uh, clearly Neil is mentally very strong, but he's not necessarily the type that you would have thought to have come through the crazy game. So Neil is always very level-headed, um, always very measured. He's not a shouter. He's not a baller. And he is methodical, professional, diplomatic. Um, as we know, um, Neil uh, wasn't able to keep us up that season. Uh, and I'll choose my words carefully here. Um, round about um, February time, um, there was a lot of chatter about how Kevin Nolan might be prepared to come back to Knotts. Uh, and I have no idea whether these people were acting with Kevin's authority or not. Uh, but word was going round. Um, and the players knew about this as well. And I thought that was very unprofessional and undermined. Uh, um, Neil. So I arranged to have a coffee with him, with um, Paul Hart. And I said, you need to know that there's a lot of talk and some of the players are buying into this. And you can work out the suspects. You can work out the suspects who were saying, oh, you won't be here too long. Kevin Nolan's going to come back and all the rest of it. And I kind of thought, because I thought he deserved to know, I kind of thought, you know, that that will be like the lighting of a blue touch paper. And it wasn't. 
Neil was kind of very matter of fact about it. Um, I'm sure he wasn't happy. I'm sure it didn't help his job. And I think if when we went down to Forest Green, you remember he brought eight players in and every one of them played and there were only three players left from the previous regime. You know, I've gone on record as saying that group of players that, that Neil inherited are, are, are one of the most toxic bunch of rotten apples I've ever come across in 30 years of professional football. So clearly Neil had a, had a, had a massive job on his hands. The club was relegated. Um, and then, of course, we had that ridiculous scenario of, of Alan battling to sell the club. Um, and there was a date in um, Neil's contract which could be exercised by both parties, whereby he could leave um, or the club uh, could um, dismiss him without compensation or minimal compensation. Um, and so the Alex. May Consortium, or Alec Kapinkanya, I'll tell you the full story one day, um, wanted to get rid of, um, of Neil and bring in their own people. Um, but clearly they couldn't stump the money up because they didn't have any. Uh, and so Alan was kind of trying to sell to them. Um, and they wanted the club to get rid of Neil uh, because they had a new manager they wanted to bring in. But, of course, there was this devil's standoff because they weren't bringing the money to the table. So that deadline passed, and the Reach brothers always wanted to keep Neil in situ, and they bought the club and kept Neil in, in, in situ. So the point here is that Neil had to cope with an awful lot of challenges, an awful lot of stuff going off behind the scenes um, for me it went wrong if you can say it went wrong at Wembley last year I'm not totally sure the club has ever fully recovered from having its best chance of getting straight back to the football league had we won that game Neil would have been the messiah only a handful of clubs have got straight back up um, I'm sure he would have signed a big new contract Everyone would have been full of the joys of spring. We lost. We didn't just lose. We were outplayed. Uh, and I, and I, I, I listened to some people. Oh, well, it would have been too soon to go back or we'll, we'll go up automatically next year. Every single game, every single game that we've played this season in the National League is a legacy of us having been beaten by Harrogate. And I think, I think that's, that's a big, it's a, Big bugbear. And I think we've struggled with that. And I think we've struggled with that. I think it's been a constant battle for Neil this season. Losing Neil Cox was undoubtedly, was undoubtedly a major blow. Those two are very tight. They've worked together for a long time. And clearly, if you are Neil Cox, you have an opportunity to go from the National League to the Football League to manage a club that you have a great affinity with. It's an absolute no-brainer. It's an absolute no-brainer. Um, Lee, any thoughts? You, 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 you know Neil better than most. Uh, I think he's always handed himself with with dignity. In, in fairness, um, and he was he was brilliant with the media lads. Um, always smile. You could ask him any question. You never felt the chance. You know, when you did ask him a testing question, you never felt that he was going to get your head bitten off. Um, you know, so he, he was very embracing in, in in that respect. I remember once when. Uh, it was Christmas time before, obviously, all the COVID pandemic. And uh, I can't remember who we'd beaten on the Boxing Day, I think it was. And um, all the media lads were just waiting down at the bottom there to speak to him. And we, we did our interviews and things like that. And he said, here, come in my office. So he, we went into his office and he got us a Christmas beer. I mean, that, that, was, the, that was the kind of guy he was. I mean, it, it, it wasn't just with the players or the media, it was everybody, you know, the fans, what the work that he did with the, the supporters last year during lockdown in COVID, you know, ringing them, making sure they're okay. And the thing that perhaps people don't realise is as well, is that during the, this whole pandemic, he has been living on his own in a flat in Nottingham, you know, no family around him. And, you know, there has been the odd chance for him to go back home when, when obviously not to have been playing in London, but I, I'm, I'm, 
I'm almost pleased for him in some respects that he's now got that time to spend with his family because I know how much a family man he is. Um, absolutely adores his wife, Sarah. He's got two beautiful children in Bella and Libby. Um, and he's just a he's just a he's just a top man. He's just a he's a lovely bloke. And I think the thing that stood out for me, I think somebody tweeted saying he was perhaps one of the most popular knots managers. Um, in terms of how much the fans liked him, in terms of his demeanour and how he came across and his character, etc. Um, and I think he will. That absence will be felt in the short term. I think it will because he was somebody who I think deeply cared about the players. He, he deeply cared about the football club. Um, and unfortunately, he in the job that he had at Notts, he was always firefighting. Whether it be takeovers, whether it be a relegation battle, and then. Once the takeover had finished, he had to build a squad in a short space of time at the, the start of, of last season, which he did, and, and got some and brought some excellent players in. And then, obviously, like Les says, they're going great guns. They're, they're, they're bashing everybody. Beat Eastley, go to Barrow, produce a fantastic, tactically disciplined performance. Beat the league leaders, who are, who are at that time had one of the best home records, not just in the national league but in the country. And you felt at that stage that it was. They were heading on for the title. I, I actually thought if that league had been, if the pandemic hadn't hit and COVID hadn't struck, they would have gone on up to win that league. Uh, absolutely no doubt. Um, but of course, the pandemic hit and then, if, then lost some key players at the, at the start of uh, last season, like Christian Dennis, were never really replaced. And the club decided for whatever reason to, to bring in a lot of players who, based on potential, I mean, Kasper Sloth for me was a. A bizarre, bizarre signing considering he'd not kicked the ball in six months. Um, so, and of course, the COVID hits, then we've got the breaks, left, right, and centre, best player gets injured. And he's always been fighting fires at knots. It's not, never had a straightforward season. And I, 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 I sympathise with him in, in, in that respect. It, all very, very valid points, Lee. I, I, I guess in the interest of balance of both sides and all the rest of it, we all know football is a brutal, brutal business and it is results driven. And, 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 and I think the interesting point here is Neil's results haven't been bad. You know, I, 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 I'm not a fan of all these stats. I pulled something out in terms of a, something like 97 games uh, and he's won about 42, 43% of those. Yeah. And lost about 25 or something like that. Now, so his results weren't bad. But were they good enough to get us promoted? Because that is the yardstick by which we as fans are looking for this season and for that matter last and it would appear from today's announcement that is the absolute yardstick irrespective of what a great guy neil is and all the rest of it the yardstick is getting this club back into the national league and it seems from today getting back into the national league getting back into the football yeah. league this season beth i think I think we have the ability in the squad. I think we've seen the ability. Um, I think it's doable. I mean, I've said before, I think he should have been given till the end of the season. I still think with the amount of games we've got left. Um, I mean, I'm not much on, on stats as well, but I've got written here, you know, it's interesting. In, in January, he picked up manager of the month for December and we pulled something like 10 points out of four games. Now, this month is merely a couple of months later. We've pulled only two points less. In a, in, in a month's period from then so from from it's it's gone from manager of the month to to no job um it's a difficult one i can't i can't give my opinion too much i can't i can't tell you what what's going to happen could we have gone up with him I, I don't know um like you said he was fighting so many fires consistently and although that's part of football you still can't sweep that under the carpet you have to deal with some really difficult things um even up till today so uh, I don't. I can't tell you what's going to happen. I, ca I can't say that we would have gone up with him, or that we still will. But I, I absolutely, like we said in a previous podcast, anything can happen in football, and I do genuinely believe that we have the ability in the squad to dominate teams. And it's getting that right mentality, um, potentially a few more players, if not um, capitalising on the players we have in the squad more, um, getting people back from injury. I think there's so many 
so many things to come into it that I think we can really succeed if everything comes together the right way. Um, yeah, uh, please, gentlemen and ladies on the um, on the message boards here, no personal abuse. I'll be getting my yellow cards out. Um, Les, um, one, one that well, you've heard it thousands of times like I have. We all have these mythical lines of the managers lost the dressing room. He had to go. Yeah, we hear that trotted out so many times, whatever that is. OK, because. To my mind, you, you you only ever keep 11 players happy in a football club squad, as you and I know, Les, because everyone that's not playing can't stand the manager, right? And the 11 that's in the team think he's all right. Now, that's basically how it works. Um, in two away games, we have been two goals down. And with 15 or 20 minutes to go, we've come back. That's not the sign of a group of players that isn't battling would you say um definitely not and also um i'd like to add to that that um during the times that um i was down at the club working i haven't been down um during the lockdown period i saw um that same group of players coming into work at 8 30 in the morning getting into the gym to build up their fitness and um, this is something that neil had encouraged them to do um, so that that could be fitter than the opposition. Um, and and they were all on personal programs. They didn't have to do it. They wanted to do it. And um, they, they were right behind him. Um, and, and I tried to, to look back and think, it hasn't been a great season. Results we, we've got, but we, we haven't played, I don't think, with the authority in matches that we had last season. I think it's... I try and think hard about it. We're missing that extra player with, with, with Kyle Wooten. He's mainly been up there on his own, fighting a, um, a, a battle and, and, and doing it admirably. Um, but um, it just there's something being missing during the course of this season. Um, and, and I don't know whether it's the, the, something that's in the owners' minds. I, I, I don't know. But um, results-wise, you, you, you can't not what, really what's uh, what's been going off the last four games, two wins, two draws. Um, it, it's, it's, a, it's a very, very difficult one. Um, but we do want to get back in that league. It's, um, it's desperate that we, that we do that. And, and if we can do it this season, then fantastic. Um. One, and, and there's been several people comment on this, Lee, um, signing of players. On the face of it, some players that are absolutely Neil Ardley signings. On the face of it, others that Neil might not have signed under different regimes at different clubs. I think that's what... I, what... I think the owners have got obviously a recruitment model in mind about the players and the, the sort of model they aspire to be, which is very much like Brentford trying to find these rough diamonds, such as Callum Roberts, for instance. And I think that's fine. But I think you can only get away with having perhaps one or two, probably three at a maximum. And I think when it comes to the decisive areas of the pitch, if you look at what Notts did with their defence at the end of last season, they made they obviously had Rawlinson under contract. They got Alex Lacey under contract. They got uh, they obviously had Dion Kelly Evans. That unit was stable. The biggest change in the team came in the most vital area of any football squad, which is the front players. They are the ones who will win you games. Now, we all know how good Carl Wooden was. We all know how good he is. He's second top scorer in the league. Fantastic achievement, really, when you consider that Notts have perhaps not been as free-flowing and has played with much control as what they did last season, as Les says. But outside of Kyle, if you look at the quality of centre-forwards that they've got, Elijah Sam, I think before he came to England, had scored six or seven goals last season. OK, one for the future, but ready for the here and now? I'm not convinced. Jimmy Knowles, teenager, and it wasn't playing regularly for Mansfield in the first team. A, legi a legitimate 10 to 15 goal centre forward? No. And unfortunately, then we had Wes the Wes Thomas scenario, COVID, never saw him again. So there was 12 goals straight off the bat. And unfortunately, as any manager will tell you, recruitment is nine tenths of the law. It is 
undoubtedly the most pivotal factor that any football club has to get right if it wants to be successful. And unfortunately, and unfortunately, I think what has cost Knotts this season is the front end of the pitch. I think if you look at the goals tally and you look at the players that have contributed goals this season, they aren't consistent enough. They play, you get a good tune out of them for 20 minutes. They start a game, never get the same level of performance. And that's because those players that they've brought in are potential. They are still learning their trade. What not should have done last summer is when Christian Dennis left the football club, they should have sat down and gone, right, we need somebody who will give us the best chance of getting another 15 to 20 goals because the burden on Carl Wooden's shoulders is astonishing. And I feel sorry for him because he is carrying that on his own and he's only 23. And I would have liked to have seen somebody experienced up there just to take the weight off him because he's playing every game. And the reason why he can't be rested is because the others aren't good enough. That's where, that, is, that is a brutal fact and it's borne out in the statistics. The rest of the centre forwards at the football club are nowhere near the level of what they were last season. And if we'd have had Callum Roberts in the team, we would have seen the same 4-4-2 formation, which would have stopped Enzio, which is now which is what's currently happened, is Enzio's playing on the right instead of the left, because last season both wingers were inverted. And had we had that crucial centre forward, if, I, if I'm talking rubbish, at, right, Stockport wouldn't have gone and got Paddy Madden. They wouldn't be paying three and a half grand to Paddy Madden because they realise the importance of having an experienced centre forward who scored goals. That's what the big clubs do. You know, if you're, ch if you're chasing a title, if you're chasing something that's that, that's tangible like promotion, you wouldn't see Manchester United or Manchester City go out and buy some 19-year-old kid and stick him in the front line who, you know, hasn't got a proven track record. It just wouldn't happen. And that's been not his biggest problem. Unfortunately, the recruitment in the final third of the pitch has been poor and they've paid the price for it. And it's borne out in the goals for column. Beth? Are not a better team or worse team than last year? Um, I don't want to say outright better or worse. I think um, we have different pros and cons and strengths in different areas of the pitch. Um, again, like like Leah said, I think something to comment on is the fact that people are being misplaced on the pitch. There's people like Enzi that are being forced in a position they shouldn't be in, and it's changing the entire system the way we play um i think there's too many other factors that are contributing to the way we're performing to say that it's just that the team aren't as good like lee says we definitely don't have the quality in as many players as we did last season up top for example i believe we have a lot of quality in the squad and i think we can do lots um i think we have great quality in the squad but again is it is it just that one or two up top that's been missing um but again we could be having a different conversation had cal roberts not been injured um so many things have happened i just i can't i don't think i can sit here and say it's a worse it's a, it's a worse team or a bad team um i think there's just too many too many things that go into that to be honest I mean, if you look at the squad sorry paul if yes, you look sorry. if you look look at the squad it's virtually pretty much the same team as last year apart from the only thing that's really changed really Jake Reeves is coming for Mitch Rose and Carl Wotton still leading the front line. The only major area of the pitch that got addressed in the summer was the front end. That was the one that needed addressing. Uh, apart from that, it's pretty good. Rawlinson, Lacey, centre-halves, right-back, Richard Finley. You know, the, the composition of the team was pretty much the same. The philosophy of this season's team hadn't changed. The only thing that stands out and what did change was the quality of the centre forwards? That's the only thing. It's the only thing you could put it down to. Yeah, I know right. a lot of people said Mitch Rose. A lot of people said Mitch Rose. Well, he was not good enough. But I think they've actually missed him this year. Right. I'm going to just. It's interesting. The reason I ask this question is because normally at a football club, and if you are an owner, certainly, you would want to see progression. Managers have a short inverted commas tenure these days. It's the League Managers Association will tell you it's down now to about 13 or 14 months. So you're either going to get better. And if you don't, you're going to be struggling in the modern world with people that run football clubs. That was the reason I asked the question. 
And certainly it seems to be fairly unequivocal on the boards here. Gary Smithurst, worse. Paul Hawksworth, worse. Nick Palmer, worse than last season. Um, not even a question. Um, SK, it's comparable results-wise, but not performance-wise. Gary Smithurst, that in itself is the key issue. No progression from last season. Richard Hawksworth, Lee, absolutely spot on re the forwards and gary smithurst midfield also needed addressing lee um mr neil ho got to disagree lee absolutely spot on re the forwards uh these players aren't regularly available at the lower level uh zed luke ftw need a midfield runner rightly or wrongly lee the the, the axis of um doyle reeves O'Brien split a lot of Knox fans, didn't it? Have we got enough legs? Have we got enough pace? Now, I think your view would be they are good enough for this standard of football to compete successfully. A lot of Knox fans wanted to see younger legs in in this group on a more regular basis. People, for instance, would hop back to Sam Osborne being allowed to leave. Thoughts on that? Well, I think if you look at Jake Reeves' contribution this year, I think he's got more goals this year. And I'd like to be, maybe I'm, I might be wrong, but I'm quite convinced he's scored more goals from centre and midfield this year than any of the other midfielders last year. I know Mitch Rose scored a few from the penalties, but in terms of open play. Um, so, you know, he's been he's been a good signing. It's like Beth says, you know, a couple of months ago, he's won, he's won Manager of the Month award for December. Um I I understand the argument about the centre midfield. Um, but again, a lot of fans last year, when Mitch Rose was playing, everyone slayed him pretty much. Didn't understand his value. But actually, they missed his athleticism and they've missed his battling characteristics. He was strong. He was powerful. And actually, he was good at getting in the final third. Um, but that's something that they've got to address now, the owners, because... I don't feel they have got enough legs in the centre midfield. I think Michael Doyle and Jake Reeves are, are excellent players. But they can't be that bad because they're not so in the playoffs. It's not like we're talking about a team that's 20, 10 points off the top six or top seven. You know, they're not miles off it. So this team and that centre midfield can't be that bad because they're in a they're in a relatively good position in, ter in terms of the league table. It's just that they're not at the top. And that, that's the thing. Everyone expected not to be title winners this year but I think when you break it down and if people are brutal and are honest they will look at the squad and say that in certain areas that the, the, the recruitment hasn't been good enough um, I want to come to Les who's sitting patiently uh, and then I want us to turn the dial towards incoming strategy all the rest of it Les I doubt there's anybody better placed to talk about uh, a Notts County goal scoring threat and capability than the club's all time record leading goal scorer. What's your take, Les? We've clearly found goals hard to come by this season. We've not always had a great deal of chances. We've, we've, we've normally had a lot of possession. What's your take on, 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 on our attacking threat capability? I think we've, we've we've covered most of it. Where we keep going back to the loss of Christian Dennis, um, uh, Wes Thomas. In the days that I played, um, I always played with somebody else up front: Tony Haitley, Richie Barker. Um, so, so so many players there, and we played as a pair. One dropped off, one ran in the back. We were always trying to upset um, central defenders, pull them out of position. Uh, and for most of the matches that I've seen this season, um, Kyle's been working on his own up there and he's been fighting a, a ball that's knocked up and, and that's one, one hell of a job. And um, I haven't studied the league for a while. I think the last time I looked at it was there eight games that we hadn't scored a goal. Now, at the start of this season, I'm thinking we can score a goal every game. Um, if we score one goal in those eight games, we're probably at the top of the league. Um, and, and that's the crucial factor in all of this to me, uh, the, um, the re replacing of, um, of those two players. I don't think um, uh, uh, if we'd have done that, I'm pretty sure that we'd have been further up. 
that's been the key figure to me. Um, just to show you, you know, we don't make these things up on this show. I mean, there, there are a huge number of you listening and watching out there, including former players, very successful former players, and the club remains very close to their heart, you know, and I think we've all just seen um, the thoughts of Neil Bishop, who was a very, very successful midfielder for Knotts at a significantly higher level. These are all opinions. No one is right. No one is wrong. What tonight is about is sharing those opinions. We can't go down the pub, right? We can't sit over a pint or gin and tonic, whatever it is you drink best, or you teetotal as you're a professional <laughs> athlete. <laughs> right? Just be a diet coat. Um, water. <laughs> um, but, but, but it's interesting. And this is about debate and getting people's opinions, views and thoughts. Um, so thank you to Neil. Uh, for, for that because we didn't know Neil was on uh, he is I suspect probably other former Knox players are uh, taking um, an eye keeping an eye on this I think we've kind of reviewed where Knox have been under Neil Ardley and we've got to this point the owners we've often spoken about a money ball approach for want of a better phrase that is, if you like, the appliance of technical data. And it's then extrapolated to which you target, choose, formulate types of players, types of age, resale value. That's a philosophy that has been implemented with huge success by Brentford. And also huge success by Barnsley. They operate the same model. So at the minute in the championship, if you look where Derby are, Nottingham Forest, Birmingham, big, big clubs, all scrapping around the relegation mark. Barnsley and Brentford are in, I think, the top six. They adopt a data driven model. It would appear this is preferred approach of Alexander and Christoph Reitz. Their day job, their day company, um, Richard Montague down at Notts County, a lot of statistical data. And that has seen us bring in certain types of players from abroad that perhaps Neil would not have brought in on his own. Doesn't make it right, doesn't make it wrong. With that in mind, Lee, do you think the next Knotts manager is going to be fitting into that statistical st analysis kind of um, approach, the pyramid that is being set up by the owners? Um, well, I think he's going to have to. Whoever whoever comes in is going to have to buy into the owner's vision, aren't they? I mean, otherwise, what would be the point? What would be the point in bringing somebody who doesn't fit what the owners want? Because um, that only ends one way. <laughs> so it's just ends with a mutual consent departure. So um, whoever they've got lined up um, will obviously be already aware of how the owners see the club going in the future, the money ball approach. Um, I have no problem going down that route, but I think you've got to have a happy medium. You've, you've got to have, okay, they got a Cal Robertson. He was brilliant. That's one signing um, that you can say, but can you say this season, the likes of Elijah Sam, the Ruben Rodriguez have really lit the touch paper. They haven't. Um, a lot of homework were done on them. And it just goes to show you that you can have all the statistics that you want, but if they're not put into the right team, the right unit, um, the right style of play, it you know, sometimes it just doesn't work. And I think I'm sure Les will Les will agree. Um so I, I think I'm all for it because I think clubs have got to be able to find talent and sell them on. It's the only real realistic way they, they can make money because owners don't have deep pockets and an endless reservoir of cash. But what Come, but on the, the flip side of that coin is that I think you have to be astute and not cut off your own nose to spite your face. You know, you can't go and fill your team full of 19-year-old kids. It's just, 
You know, it's very seldom, especially in the, especially in the league like the National League. It's brutal. It's a brutal it's a team. Full, it's a league full of men. Um, so I think it's going to be very interesting to see what happens when the new manager comes in, whether he's allowed to bring in his own players. Um, for me, I think the first thing that the new manager has got to come in has got to address the centre forward situation because nobody has really established um, a centre forward partnership with Carl Wooden this season. Everybody's had a go. Nobody's really staked a claim for that. Um, there's the issue with the midfield, whether it's got enough legs. Um, and I'd probably like to see another wide player come in because outside of Enzio, if Enzio gets injured, there's no other winger. There's, no, there's not another winger on the books. Callum Roberts injured. If Enzio gets a knock, that's him. Yes, him out. So there's your uh, pacing from your team. Just want to go to a few more comments because there's some very good comments coming in. Um, uh, Richard Hawksworth, we need mobility, strength and pace, not slow old timers. Um, Adam Wright, Neil was very stats based and suited the owner's style, which is what makes the decision more surprising. Mad Dog um, said on this very podcast that National League needs young, hungry pros. Um, Paul Hawksworth, pace, pace, pace. K. Oliver Ramsden, I think Neil's a lovely, caring man, but unfortunately doesn't get you promotion. Um, Zed Luke, look at Kingsley, and they made us look silly because they had young, quick players like Jordan Richard. Uh, Michael Wall, um, Lee, we're 14 points off the top spot with no chance of catching them in a season where Ardley said that promotion was the aim and anything else was not acceptable. Paul Edgar, you are all saying Stan Knowles and Ruben are not good enough game on game, but could that be down to the game and changing the game changing week on week? Um, Connor McManus, will the players play for this new manager? Um, Luke Parry, Knight. Um, Paul Hawksworth, there's a lad called Crawford at Hartlepool. Um, Elliot Burrows, our players been pedestrian this year. Uh, as fast as I'm reading them, people, you're, um, you're, 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 you're tapping more out. Um, Ruben's that dynamic central midfielder, says Mr. Neil, and much better than Rose was, but the league normally means the knots have to play as many ball winners as possible um tony hudson not seen sam play center forward yet he is always wide kieran scott Knowles assessment harsh goals to game ratio very good um beth interesting point raised earlier um i think it was undoubtedly the case that when kevin nolan was replaced um there were a group of players um, that probably did not do anywhere near as much for the cause as they should have done with the following managers. You know, we we all refer to them as bomb squads these days, don't we? Not that it's, you know, it's always been like that to an extent. Um, changing a manager when the when results are decent, they might not be as good as people want them to be, but this is not. This is not John Sheridan, 10 games losing on the spin. Yeah, this is still a team that is picking points up. From your, you're playing the game now. Is there a danger that players can dip because of this change or is it just business as usual? Um, I think there can be a mix depending on what type of players um, you have in your squad. Uh, an example of a similar situation with me, the way that I'm looking at it from a player's point of view is, in my last club, I was brought over by a British manager and two months later, he was fired. Um, now, immediately alarm bells went off in my head. Obviously, it's a different country and there's other factors, but there was the issue of, oh my gosh, I'm going to have to, it's either going to be I'm going to dig my heels in and prove myself for the new manager and we get an initial spike of a couple of games where the, you know, the players are going to want to play because they need to get into the squad or um, it will they'll bounce back from it quite poorly. And I can't think which way that's going to go, which players are going to um, go which way, but the, there's undoubtedly the kind of one end to the other. People might respond really well. People might struggle a bit. Um, but definitely, I think it could be really difficult for players, especially if you've been brought in by that manager and you have a sense of trust. You know, Doyle might be a really good example of kind of an older, more seasoned player clearly has a big impact on the squad, was tight with the manager, um, how will he respond? And similarly, players like um, Knowles, younger players that have come in, how are they going to respond? So 
Yeah, I think it's just about waiting out and seeing seeing how players respond to it. But I do think it could go one one way or the other on the extreme. Um, Les, I think most people would say that... If I could just add to that, by the way, it does depend as well if, if the contracts are running out in the summer. <laughs> yeah, the old, the old school, Les, if you've got four months left on your contract, you're exactly. unlikely to be injured. Right, and you're playing out your skin, aren't you? If you've got three years left, then uh, you don't need to worry too much for another two and a half years. Uh, well, in the days that I played, you didn't have that length of contract. One year. <laughs> two uh, years if you were lucky. I, I think most people, Les, would say the easier decision was not to have made the decision on, on Neil until the end of the season. Some will say... This is a reckless decision by the owners. Some will say this is a brave decision by the owners because clearly they must be doing this decision, making this decision now to maximise their chances, the club's chances of getting back into the Football League at the earliest available opportunity. Um, what's your take on it? Well, I haven't had much time to think about it, but... Um... <laughs> I think, you know, the, the results haven't been that bad. Um, Performance-wise, you, you've got to think about that a little. So the owners are thinking in terms of moving the club on to another level. That was in the official statement. Yeah. So we wait and see. Um, it, it's so difficult to think who is going to come in, who is going to be the manager, because I'm sure that one has been identified. Um you know, is is it is it a foreign manager? Is it somebody that's going to play an entirely different game of football? Um, knowing the, 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 the Christopher and Alexander, I, they're very much into into entertaining football. You know, I sat there in, in in the sand with them, and they they want to entertain the crowd. They want to play good football. They also want to win matches too, um, which is what we all want to do, and it ain't easy. Um, but um, no, um, you know, as uh, as you say, one chapter's closed now. Another one's going to open up, and um, the most important thing is everybody getting behind the club. No negativity, and let's give it a real good chance. And uh, I, I think automatic is out of the question. But get into those playoffs, and if you get into those playoffs and you're performing well, then there's a hell of a good chance that you get all the way there to Wembley and win there. So. Um, let's keep our fingers crossed that um, all goes well. Uh, Heather Laxton, the deed is done, rightly or wrongly. Time for a fresh face with new ideas. Andy Mack, for the first time in a long time, we had stability. 17 games to play with games in hand over others. Uh, he follows up by saying Neil's contract was up in the summer. This is a bold move by the owners. Stuart Dakin, who would the panel like to be the next manager? We'll come to that in a moment. Um, JG Whittaker will depend a lot on how the senior players like Doyle and O'Brien react. They could make or break this squad. Um, uh, Paul Smith, let's not forget that Knotts will lose 500k next season in parachute payment if we don't go up this season. Uh, Kay Oliver. Uh, Ramson, she just says, oh, thanks, keep up the good work. Thank you very much. We we will. Here's my two penneth. And then we'll get that we'll, we'll, and we'll round up with some final thoughts. Here's my two penneth. Neil was a very, very safe pair of hands that navigated this club through very, very difficult waters. And I think you could have had 90% of other managers that would have seen us not in the playoffs, mid-table, and probably half of those managers, we might have been skirting the bottom six or seven like Stockport or Chesterfield, wow. whatever we say. Now, the question is, did Neil have, a, have enough to get us over the finishing line? Because... This club is judging the finishing line as returning to the National League, uh, to, uh, returning to the Football League in the season in which it is playing football. That, that, that's the finishing line. And it's a high bar, but that's what it is. It's a lot harder to get back into the Football League than it is to drop out of it, to be honest. Um, the question, 
was Neil capable of doing that? And I think what the owners are now doing is they are going to they are attempting to back themselves to find the 10 percent of managers out there that can get us over the finishing line but the gamble with that decision of course is you could end up with someone where we end up halfway we end up bottom half so it's a brave decision and i think neil ticked a lot of boxes a lot of boxes but it was that question mark can he get us promoted because anyone that doesn't get Notts county promoted into the into the football league is deemed a failure they're the facts they're the facts and there's only two out of them 20 22 23 teams that can do that and i get back to the point i think the pivotal moment for neil was losing a game against Harrogate that, in all honesty, we should never have lost. There are, there are, there are debates to be had about us going down on the day, Harrogate treating it as an event. You know, we had a group of players that had played in the Football League. Several of those had played at Wembley. And we were playing a team that I don't think had a single player that had ever played at Wembley. It was a, it, for me, it was an incredibly poor performance. And the moment we stay in the National League for another year, that's bad news. That's bad news. And it brings a huge challenge, a huge, huge challenge. And Neil's kind of kept us at a mark where we never really threatened top spot this season, but we've been in the playoffs. It could have been a heck of a lot worse. But is it enough? Is it enough? And I think as I put a couple of tweets out earlier, you know, a very, a very famous uh, international manager said to me, the owners of football clubs, their tenure is decided on the managers that they appoint. This is their first appointment of a manager. They inherited Neil in the same way as a manager inherits a group of players. And the success of a manager is judged, as you said earlier, Lee, by the quality of the players that they bring in. An owner's tenure of a football club is defined not by a, not necessarily by a money ball approach, a long ball approach, a cultured approach, whatever it is, whether they spend a lot of money, whether they don't spend much money at all. It's, it's dictated to by the manager that they appoint and does that manager deliver the results? Jack done it, Les. I can't. Really, I think we were you in the were you in the dressing room at Wrexham when you told one day we're appointing an unknown guy called Jimmy Cyril, and most of you didn't have a clue. That defined Jack Dunnett's tenure at Notts County. Derek Pavis, who gets scandalously little credit for what he did at Notts County, his tenure was ultimately uh, defined by Neil Warnock. And to a lesser extent, Sam Allardyce. You know, I'm not sure Ray True ever recovered from not renewing the contract, which he could have done, as we found out on these podcasts, of Steve Cottrell. I'm not sure he ever really recovered from that. So I think this is a hugely, hugely pivotal moment for the owners. Fair play. They put a lot of money in. It's a brave decision because the easier... The easier decision here would have been to leave it till the end of the season. They must clearly think that by making this change, they are going to improve their chances of getting this club promoted. It's a huge, it's a huge ask, a huge ask. Um, Lee, do you think with the new appointment, we will have a better chance of going up or not? Crikey, that's a question, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and we don't know who it is. I appreciate that, but but let, let's also be realistic. We, we all laugh, right? Look, we haven't just missed out on the cowlers, right? If we got rid of Neil two weeks ago, we wouldn't have got the cowlers, right? Okay, let, let's live on planet reality here. Let's live on planet reality. Um, go on. What, what what are your considered thoughts? Um, I, it depends who it is. 
And B, there needs to be some glaring holes that need to be addressed in the squad and whether they can go out and fix them before the, the transfer deadline. I think if they can get Callum Roberts back fit, um, they can get another get a decent striker. As you saw what Stockport did. They went out and got Paddy Madden, didn't they? Um, if they can fix those areas of the squad, add some legs. I've got no concerns about the back, the centre halves and the full backs. I think they're all very good, and that's proven by the goals conceded record, which I think is still the best in the in the league. Um, it's all about improving that goals for column, and if they can get Roberts back fit, if they can get Enzo back on the left, if they can get another, if they can get a centre forward in who has got a bit of a reputation um, and probably add to the midfield, then I'd say they 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 would have a chance, yeah. Um, but it's like everything, isn't it? When you make these changes, nothing's ever guaranteed, is it? It's a, it's a gamble. Whichever way you look at it, it, it's a big decision by the owners, but it is a gamble. There's no there's no guarantee that the new man comes in and hits the ground running, which he's going to have to, by the way, because there's a lot of games coming up, a lot of important games. Got a big game on Saturday, um, FA Trophy final at stake. So there is no time for a bedding in period. That's another thing that people forget. He hasn't got he hasn't got a whole summer to put a squad in place. He's got to come in, not to six in the table. The ambition is promotion. So they have to hit. They have to be pretty much foot perfect as soon as they walk in through the door. Huge ask. But I'm fascinated to see how it works out. Um, some interesting points. Uh, Mr. Neil, need a Cottrell-style manager. <laughs> We'd love one of them. If only for short time to gain promotion. Uh, Nick Goring, agree we should have gone up last season. Richard Hawks with, I fear, an unknown foreign manager who doesn't know the National League. Um, uh, PH Defiance. Cross 24. Crikey, I don't know what that is. But anyway, ah, I'd go Kevin Nolan with Neil Bishop as assistant. Uh, Mr. Bishop, I do believe, has done his badges, so give him a chance. He's currently at uh, Mansfield Town's youth setup. Um, Paul Edgar, we must all have trust in the owners. They have been good so far. Um, Nick Goring, I don't think the owners would have made this decision if they didn't think they could improve their chances of going up this season. Um, Richard Hawksworth, KN Sign, Norhusin and Matty Virtue, enough said. Uh, Matt Ben Notts, 2010, we did make it from seventh to first with Mr Cottrell. Um, indeed, we did. One or two others have also spoke about desire, appetite, hunger. Where Martin Allen spoke about targeting younger players in National League North and South, bringing them up. Um, Beth, what about you? What I don't know whether you have any specific names, but is, is, there, is there a type that you would like to see come in? I, can't, I don't have a... I don't have a name. I don't. Uh, I don't even think there's been long enough to even process the fact that we've lost the manager and to think about who's who is actually available. Um, in my opinion, I can only hope for a manager that holds the same qualities as Ardley did. I think, as we've mentioned a lot, um, a good man. Um, I think a good manager comes with being a good man. Um, and I can. We can at this point in time only ask for somebody that does the right things. And like Lee says whoever they are they need to come step the foot in the door and and be pretty much perfect from the get-go and i think they're gonna have to understand that um the turnaround of games is just ridiculous i mean you know even like with a day off between saturday and their tuesday that's only a, a couple of one or two days training so a, a new manager isn't going to be able to come in and implement an entire new system immediately so they're going to have to initially deal with what what's happening and what we've got and Whatever type that manager that it may be, it's just got to be successful. I think um, that's all I can say about it, to be honest. Les, Mr. Notts County, I dread to think how many managers you've seen walking in and out of managers' doors at Meadow Lane since the late 60s. Um, is there a trait or a characteristic, something you feel that to be successful at Notts, you absolutely have to have? Um. I, th I think um, it must be difficult at the top level, but moving down the leagues, um, I think it must be difficult for players um, to know too much. You know, Neil, Neil talked about um, having three different systems um, that the lads could play. And I know 
in my time at Notts County playing with Jimmy Sir, we only had one system. Um, uncomplicated, simple. This is the way that you're going to play if you're in that position, if you're in that position. And uh, we're going to let the opposition know that, that we're there. Uh, we're going to go out there. We're going to win that battle. And um, I'm pretty sure that the new guy coming in will not be a novice. I'm pretty sure that he'll know uh, the game and and that's why he's been brought in um, with with the view of getting this this team um, this squad of players to kick on um, but I, d I do think we, we certainly need somebody else up front that can uh, help along that way um, to score the goals there's not a lot wrong I agree with what Lee's been saying defensive wise we're as, as good as anything in the league um, probably a little bit more in, in, in midfield, but certainly Kyle's been short up front. I think um, we, we need another striker up there um, and, and um, every confidence that we could um, we can finish in the top six and go on to win. Hey, your fan clubs are out in force, Les. JG Whitaker, make big Les the manager. <laughs> I had one game, that's all, at Stockport. <laughs> That was enough for me. <laughs> Work all week with the players in training. And when you're this side of the line watching it, you're thinking, what are we do? We haven't done that through the week. So I've got full understanding of what Neil, uh, Neil Arby's been through. <laughs> um, a few more observations. K. Oliver Ramson losing Neil Cox didn't help. Neil absolutely agree. Um, uh, Notts County stats. One thing that is clear about these owners is that they are not reactive. This decision and the choice of replacement will have been something they have been assessing, analysing and contemplating. Uh, a name that's been mentioned a few times, and we're going to ask um, Lee in a moment for the runners and riders. So yeah, get, get, get the notepad out and write a few runners and riders down in the next 30 seconds, Lee. Conor McManus, Ricardo Monis. Now then, now then. Talked about the club having an identity in its playing style and philosophy. Podcast win was absolutely brilliant. Got to tell you, if you've not seen that one, watch it. It's absolute class. Uh, I'm not sure about bringing Mustafa Dumbaya on, uh, about five foot six, to defend uh, a, a set piece with two minutes to go at Gillingham, and we got relegated. But he spoke very passionately about ethos and identity. Certainly think the owners have that. Um, do, 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 uh, Paul Smith, Rodriguez and Sam would never have signed without the owner's involvement. Um, does Les see it likely that a new manager will be able to get any more out of these players? Um, there's a little red button in one of these corners somewhere. It says subscribe. For those of you who haven't, just click it now, please. It's entirely free. It means you get a better user experience with us, helps us. I want to get to a 1,000 subscribers. We're, we're about 600 odd. So there's a little red button somewhere. Just get the button, press it. It doesn't – you just subscribe automatically. Don't worry. Um, right, I've given you enough time. Now then, everyone is now waiting with bated breath. Come on, Lee Curtis. Scoop, who are the runners and riders that's going to be um, – declaring themselves i mean look whether it's a foregone conclusion we don't know um who, who's out there that might be coming would you say good question nicky butts sent shockwaves throughout the uh throughout the country didn't he when he left manchester united wants to get into management um not particularly convinced um whether that would be happening um because i think there's some talk about him potentially going over to miami isn't it where david and and Phil yeah. are so. Um, I don't know. I, don't, I mean, it, I presume it must be somebody who's out of work. It has to be so, because um, nobody's said they've had an approach from Knots to to talk to the manager, um, and it would have usually got out by now. And my experience of these things that these things do creep out, as you all know, Paul and and Les in particular. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm in, honestly, I'm, I'm interested. I know people talked about the Cowleys, but that was Cloud Cuckoo landed, no chance. Um, Here's a few names then and give us whether you think there's any possibility. So Tony Hudson says Richie Wellens, that's one. Um, Chloe Page says uh, Moniz would be great if we played at home every week. Um, <laughs> not sure about away. Um, uh, Gary Alexander, uh, Chloe Norman, uh, eternal optimist. Chris Wilder. Ex-Knots player. Well, 
He was linked with Notts, wasn't he, under, under Ray? You imagine, I think, I can't remember which manager had gone, but he was certainly somebody. He was at Northampton at the time, and I remember, distinctly remember, there being some conversation had about Chris potentially coming to, to Notts. And I the think... Ones. You're right, you're right. I, I, I think, that. if I remember rightly, they ended up going with John Sheridan. It might have been that time, might have been that time, but Chris was, at, uh, Chris was definitely at Northampton at the time. Yeah, um, it, it, it's names. Chris Barker, Paul Tisdale, Steve Sliver, Silver, Jim Gannon, Sam Locke, Donald Trump, oh, bloody hell, uh, Paul Edgar, Tim Flowers. Um, so all, all, no, all the things have been thick and fast. I mean, look, I mean, my gut feel here is this is a done deal already, if I'm honest with you. And I wonder, you know, I, I, I stand to be massively corrected here. I, I wonder because it seems to have been kept so quiet. You know, there's been no whispers, really, has there? There's been no no one of any authority saying, oh, this is the one. Uh, you know, I remember when um, Kevin Nolan was removed and um, in about 14 hours, Harry Kuehl, you know, know why? Um, on the face of it, still in a job and all the rest of it. You know, he was back down to four to one or something, and, and clearly it was him. So clearly someone knew something and, and, and was saying something. I've not seen anything. I wonder, does that mean this person is overseas? Someone that might not be a household name? Someone that fits in terms of a, a continental blueprint? There's another one for you. Do you think it'll be a manager or do you think it'll be a head coach? Great question. Great question. But then if you're a head coach, you don't pick the players then, do you? If I'm right, if that's the if that's the continental method, you have a sporting director or whatever who, who looks after that. Um, well, you know, I wait mean, and see uh, You're the obvious person to ask this question because you have played continentally in Bulgaria. I mean, how different is the model if you were playing at Pyrenees? How different is the model there compared to England? Is it, a you know, we still have the traditional manager here, don't we, in a lot of cases. Um, is it very different abroad? Head coach, that sort of thing? My experience was pretty similar in that I think the time that I was there is quite British run. Um, it's the men's manager, British, our manager, British, um, lots, a couple of the background staff and everything as well. Um, so I think it's quite it's quite similar actually. When I went out, there was the main manager. We had an assistant manager. We had a coach, S and C coach. So from my experience, um, I can say it's been it was pretty similar. But is that because of the British influence? I couldn't really comment on any of the other teams or if there was any difference there. Um, Les, um, head coach or manager for you? It's a really difficult question. Um, dear. Uh, I've got a slight leaning for head coach, I think, um, but I, I don't know. Yeah. Are you talking about a preference for me or are you thinking about what, what I think I've, is likely to happen? We're, we're trying to look just sort I of think games like crystal yeah, ball here, aren't we? Where, where is the model going now? You know, um... well, I'm pretty sure that the, you know, with the the recruitment business that um, the owners have, uh, and the analysis that they have on players, then it probably leans towards a head coach, doesn't it? Hmm. it, it it's interesting. A few people here are, are saying Michael Doyle. Lee, do you think there's any possibility, even if not? the main job there could be a coaching role for him or do you think he sees himself purely as a player still um interesting because i know michael does want to go into coaching eventually um i just think with the way that and where knots are in terms of their season and what's at stake i don't think it can afford to be a rookie um I think rookies are fine if you give them a summer of preparation where they you know, have a chance to build their own squad and work over things on pre-season, I think. But for the stage that Notts are at, at with the way um, that promotion is on the line and there's a potential FA 
trophy final. Obviously, got a big game on Saturday. I don't think it's it, it really calls for somebody who hasn't got that experience, who knows what it takes and understands the pressure of trying to lead a team to get out of the league. So um, my hope is that it is with somebody with a bit of experience. Um, Paul Tisdar, I've seen that name mentioned on here. Um, I mean, he had a very good track record of developing some good young players in the Ollie Watkins at Exeter. Um, so I'm really interested, but I think it, it, it's such a big decision for the owners because obviously... We all, we all want to get out of the league, don't we? We all want to be back. We want that that tag back, don't we? We want that world's oldest professional football league club. We want it back. We want the sign back on the Jimmy Cyril stand. Um, so I'm really interested to see uh, how it all pans out. I still think there's a lot of work to do in the transfer market before the deadline closes, if they are to give themselves the best chance. Um, and I would expect the announcement probably to be made tomorrow, um, certainly before the game, because the club didn't even say that anybody was in a caretaker capacity, crucially, did they? Usually you get a statement which tells you such and such is taking over in the short term until we until we find the right man. So deal's obviously done and dusted. Um, and we await to see just who that man is. Exciting times, I guess. Gary Smith has chucked a few names in. Paul Cox, um, Phil Parkinson, um, a few people. Few people have said Martin Allen, always ever popular, always ever popular. Um, any thoughts, Les? And I, I'm knowing the, the two um, owners, I don't think that's the route that they're going down. Um, I'm obviously can't wait for it for the announcement, and I'm pretty sure it's got to happen first thing in the morning before training. There is nobody to train the players. Um, they're all in tomorrow morning. Who's going to take the training? There's a big match on Saturday, like you say, so it's got to be happening in the morning, hasn't it? Um, and um, maybe they're keeping it back um, to keep the players on edge because they'll all be wondering and they're coming into the ground tomorrow what's happening, what's going on, and um, they're very quickly going to be introduced to the new manager and um, this is the way that we're going forward. New era. Roberto Mancini's out of work. Yeah, I, it, it's been mentioned on my little list here that's flagging up. I've got to say, Michael Terry, what a great, what a great one this is. Let's have Curl and Monis as a duo with their respective home and away records. We can't <laughs> fail. Keep Curl record club away run of a year without getting beat. Yeah, and we all know what Ricardo was like at home with seven goal thrillers. In which the opposition would usually get three and we get four. So, um, yeah, that'd be, that'd be a good little um, combination. Um, guys, I mean, this, this by far the most popular uh, ever we've had so far. Um, thank you so much to all of you tonight. We could literally go on for hours, I know. But um, I know you've been rearranging a few things, Beth, so we need to let you get off. Lee, it's been your day off. It's classic, isn't it? The one thing is, when the local reporter has a day off, it is guaranteed, <laughs> guaranteed, biggest story of the year breaks. It always, always the place. Well, it happened with Kevin. It happened with Kevin Nolan. I remember I was at a festival, dancing away underneath the stars. The text message goes, "Kevin's gone." I was like, "Oh, you absolutely joking me?" I was having a great, I was having a great time as well, and then I had to go home. <laughs> Uh, but, uh, mm. uh, Beth, thank you Lee thank you for coming uh, and doing this on your day off as always thank Les we got there uh, in the end with the, um, <laughs> with the um, so it's great to hear from you um, and to each and every one of you tonight literally hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of you uh, have uh, dialed in um, the the message board in front of me has just been going like the clappers. So I, apologies if we didn't get to ask all of your observations and thoughts. Thank you ever so much indeed. What we will be doing, so you know, uh, is when the manager is announced, it could be tomorrow, but when the manager is announced, we will be having a show that evening, okay? So we will be instantly dissecting and looking forward with the new manager so if it's tomorrow we will be doing two shows tomorrow 
Don't forget, we've got Regan Booty in the can. He comes out at five o'clock tomorrow. Very good. Speaks very glowingly of Lewis Knight. They were teammates at Bradford Park Avenue. And another little uh, quick reminder, press that red subscribe button, please. It's completely free. It will help your experience uh, of watching us. Um, those of you who've been watching it on Twitter, uh, thank you very much for that as well. Uh, Wayne Wilkins, great show. I take my yellow card on the chin. Apologies to Paul Swift for my comment. Too. That's what we like to see. 90 minutes on the pitch, giving it to them. Then off the pitch, we're all friends again. So thank you very much indeed. Um, we look forward to speaking to you. I have a feeling. I have a feeling we will be here same place. Same time tomorrow evening, i.e. Thursday evening. Like you guys, I genuinely do not have a clue. I don't have a clue, but I think I think it's already sorted. I think it's announced on Thursday morning. Um, and then we can all um, play some more games and hope the us get to Wembley on Saturday against Haunters. Everybody, thank you very much for watching and listening tonight. Speak soon.